Got some past exam questions here for the Year 12 Halogenoalkanes topic. So the link to the questions is in the description of the video. So if you want to have a go at them, download the questions, have a go, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so question one, construct the equation to show the complete combustion of C10H22. So complete combustion produces carbon dioxide and water. So I always do it this way. Number of carbons in the fuel is the number of carbon dioxide you'll get. You'll get half as many waters as hydrogens in the fuel. And then I go back and do the oxygens with the top heavy fraction. So 31 over 2 or 2s get you the 31 O's you need on that side. So just with the aid of equation, how NO is formed in an aeroplane engine. So nitrogen makes up four fifths of the air, reacts with oxygen, and it forms two moles of nitrogen monoxide. And I've just said there, the extreme conditions in the engine are enough energy to break the NN triple bond. Question two, what's a radical? It's a species with an unpaired electron. Next part of the question looks at one of the processes leading to the breakdown of ozone in the stratosphere. So we've got these two equations. So you can see in the first equation, the NO reacts with the ozone. And then in the second equation, you can see that the NO is reformed. So it's acting as a catalyst. So it's used up, but then reformed. Ozone in the stratosphere is broken down to make O2 and O. So we've got this equilibrium that actually exists in the stratosphere. So why is the concentration of ozone maintained? And it's because this has reached dynamic equilibrium. So the rate of the forward reaction, so the rate of the breakdown of ozone, is equal to the rate of the formation of ozone by the recombining of those two. And finally, why is it important that this concentration of ozone is maintained in the stratosphere? And that's because ozone absorbs harmful UV radiation. Question number three, chlorine radicals in the stratosphere act as a catalyst for ozone depletion. So basically we've got to complete these two equations. These are propagation equations Bit unusual, OCR haven't used the dots on the chlorine radical. Uh, sometimes they do, they haven't here, so I haven't. So basically what's gonna happen is the chlorine radical will react with uh, the ozone molecule and it will create the oxygen and this will become a ClO radical. The ClO radical will then react with an oxygen atom and regenerate the chlorine um, radical and an oxygen molecule. So it's kind of backing up the evidence there that it's a catalyst. So the chlorine radicals are used, but then reformed. So the overall reaction for these two, we just add them together. So if you imagine that plus that plus that plus that makes those four, and you can cancel down and it ends up being that. Question four, iodoethane is reacted with ammonia, write an equation for the reaction. So iodoethane has this formula, so there's a mark getting for getting that right. Reacts with two moles of ammonia and it forms this amine and NH4I, ammonium iodide. Next part of the question, we had to complete the mechanism. So we were given the structure of uh, one bromopropane and we were given the intermediate structure. So we had to go from that to that. So the ammonia molecule uses a lone pair on the nitrogen and it attacks the slightly positive carbon. Remember this bond needs a dipole across it. Um, attacks that carbon and it repels the electron pair completely onto the bromine and breaks that bond. So that is going to put the NH3 onto the carbon. Effectively, the nitrogen's lost an electron, so it becomes positively charged and the bromine breaks off as a Br- ion because effectively it's gained an electron. You don't have to show that lone pair there, but I always do. So the final part of the question, this big seven marker, where we've got to process all of these results and describe and explain um, the effect of the halogen in the halogenoalkane, what effect it has on the um, rate of hydrolysis, the groups attached to the carbon of a carbon-halogen bond, in other words, a type of halogenoalkane, primary, secondary, or tertiary, and then finally the temperature of the hydrolysis. So we'll deal with the first bullet point. So we're going to look at these 
these three results here because these are all straight chain halogenoalkanes, they're not branched. They all have the formula C4H9 halogen. So these are going to show the effect of the halogen in the halogenoalkane. And you can see from the times that the iodoalkane is hydrolyzed the fastest, then the bromo and the chloro ones hydrolyze the slowest. It takes the longest to hydrolyze. So my answer for that little bit there is here. So I'm just saying the first three results show the effect of the halogen on the rate of the hydrolysis. Chloroalkanes are hydrolyzed the slowest due to the fact that the CCL bond is the strongest, or you could say there has the highest bond enthalpy. And then I've just given the other extreme, the iodoalkanes are hydrolyzed the fastest due to the fact that the CI bond is the weakest, or you could say has the lowest bond enthalpy. Okay, so we'll move on to the second bullet point now, the type of halogenoalkane, so that's down to the number of groups attached to the carbon of the carbon halogen bond. So that's illustrated by these three here, because these are all bromoalkanes, so we're not varying the type of halogen. So this one here is actually a secondary halogenoalkane. There's the skeletal formula for it. So the carbon with the bromine on is bonded to two directly. This one here in green is a primary halogenoalkane. The carbon with the halogen on is bonded to one carbon directly. And the blue one, this one here, is a tertiary halogenoalkane. The carbon with the halogen has got three carbons directly bonded. So you can see that the tertiary one hydrolyzes the fastest and the primary one hydrolyzes the slowest. So here's my answer for that bit. So I'm saying the last three results, all bromoalkanes, show, show the effect of the number of carbon groups attached directly to the carbon atom that's bonded to the halogen. The primary bromoalkane is hydrolyzed the slowest, so I'm quoting the time from the table. It's really important to, to do that. 110 seconds, followed by the secondary at 89 seconds, and then finally the tertiary is the fastest at 44 seconds. So an explanation for the times, something like this, the carbon-halogen bond must therefore be weaker or get weaker or easy to break as the number of carbon groups bonded increases. And then the final thing um, is the effect of the temperature on the rate of hydrolysis. So this is just a classic rate of reaction um, type of question. So you can see that all the times at 50 degrees C are slower than the corresponding 60 degree time. So all I'm going to do is just pick one of these, I think I've gone for that one, and just talk about that. So I'm using data from the table. So for that final bullet point, it's this stuff here. All of the results show that at the higher temperature, the rate of hydrolysis increases. E.g. for C4H9Cl, the time reduces from 243 seconds to 121 seconds, going from 50 to 60 degrees C. This is because at the higher temperature, the particles have got more kinetic energy, there's more successful collisions, or you could say there are more particles exceeding the activation energy, or you could say there's more energy available to break the carbon-halogen bond.